Hello, St. Mark's. It's August 12th, 2020. I'm Matt Wright, and this is St. Mark's at Midweek. You know what? School bells are about to ring, and that's true of our own St. Mark's school as well. But what does school look like in this pandemic era? Here's a hint. It's different from anything we've known before, but still challenging, exciting, and even fun. We'll find out how as we visit with Jennifer Foley Tolbert, St. Mark's Head of School. It's our a head of school check-in. Hi, Jen. Hi, Matt. So good to see you. Good to see you too, even though we're talking on screens. Um, no, right. None of us have seen much of each other lately. <laughs> you probably this is haven't the new seen... way that we're communicating these days. I know. And you probably haven't seen too many kids. I haven't, although I have to say we had a few kids on campus today uh, to take some photos and um, kind of show what our protocols are going to look like uh, in just a few short weeks. So it was really, it just warmed my heart to be around kids. It's been strange <laughs> to be in a school with no children. So uh, it was really nice. <laughs> well, for those who aren't actively involved in the daily life of St. Mark's School, I thought it would be good to check in and, and sort of give people an idea of what's been going on and what you have planned for the coming school year. Right. Uh, and as you just mentioned, school starts in a short time. Uh, and I know as a member of the school board uh, that you guys, uh, the administrative team and the staff have been working really hard to, uh, to set up school in a way that's uh, both useful for students and families, but also safe. Mm -hmm. uh, so tell us a little bit about how school is going to go starting in the fall. Sure. Well, time is a ticking and we are getting ready. We've been working very hard since the kids left in June because there's that much work to do. And the way that I'm kind of explaining it to everyone is it's almost like opening three new schools. Our preschool will be opening in person uh, and we're meeting with our parents so that they can make a choice either between an on-campus option or a distance learning pilot program. So that's kind of its own school that we're opening. And then in K through sixth grade, we will be in distance learning per the state mandate from Governor Newsom, all of our schools, uh, kindergarten on up, uh, must start with distance learning. And so we are opening a very, in a very different way in our K through six uh, as well. And uh, all of those different models um, are asking us to really rethink, reimagine uh, our schedules, how we set up our classrooms. And uh, just so that we're prepared for all scenarios, we've also been doing parallel planning really since March so that we're ready for whatever comes our way. Um, so it has meant that we've had crews on campus all summer. It hasn't been much of a summer uh, for those of us who are in facilities or admin. The teachers have been doing lots of professional development so that we're ready as well. Uh, but we're ready for school. We just want our kids back. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me how school works now with kids not being able to come on campus K through six. Sure. So distance learning means that students are in their homes. Uh, we provide devices and we're very lucky to have the resources uh, to be able to provide an iPad for every student uh, so that they can learn at home. Uh, we also provide materials. So we have a big push of learning materials. We'll have learning boxes for our students about once a month um, so that they have everything that they need at home to continue with learning. We use lots of different platforms. I think most people are familiar with Zoom. We use some other platforms through Google, um, the Google suite uh, that's uh, available for educators. Uh, we use Seesaw and a bunch of other platforms as well. So part of what we'll be doing is training our kids and our parents to make sure that everybody feels confident and we can make those connections and facilitate learning at home. And we learned a lot uh, from this past spring. We had to turn on a dime and kind of build the plane while we're flying it. But over the course of the summer, the teachers and I have had a chance to really reflect on what worked well, uh, what adjustments we want to make, lots of professional development throughout the summer. And we built that um, throughout the year as well so that we can offer the most robust program um, and engagement for students as we can. So um, that's kind of what it looks like uh, for the time being. What was the biggest thing you learned from March until now? What are the big takeaways? Yeah, so I think, um, you know, human connection is so important and student engagement um, as well. And so 
Uh, one thing that we learned uh, was just the importance of having a schedule that mirrors as best we can what it's like for students to be here in person. And so this fall we'll have much more synchronous experiences that's live sessions with students where um, it really mirrors more what it feels like to be in a classroom, even though we're doing it virtually. So we'll still have morning meetings by Zoom. We will um, have instruction, mini lessons, and then kids may, you know, kind of right in the moment without turning the cameras off, go and work in, some, in, in small groups or work individually and then come back as a group. Um, so I think the flow to the day is something that we really try to think about. Um, and I think it will feel a little bit more like uh, students uh, remember uh, about being in a classroom. How do parents feel about all of this? I'm sure parents would love to have their kids in school as they had planned, um, which, which can't happen right now, but have parents been generally supportive and, uh, and helpful to you? They have, you know, I, I have to say, we are so blessed at St. Mark's to have amazing parents who want to partner with us. It started in March and they continue to be amazing partners um, in support of our kids. And that's been our legacy at St. Mark's. And that's certainly true, especially in a moment like this. And so they've been very supportive, of course, disappointed because we all had hoped that we would be back in person. But given what we're seeing in the landscape right now, um, you know, we want to make sure that we're opening uh, in a safe way for all of our students. And, you know, I think parents understand that and they appreciate some of the, the adjustments that we've been talking about um, and just know that we're, we'll continue to deliver a high quality program for their kids. We have that trust with our families. Now, here's a question I'm sure people will ask, why can preschoolers be on campus when <laughs> older kids can't? Yes, that's a great question. Our preschool falls under a separate set of licensing guidelines. We forget that sometimes because we work really hard to make sure that the preschool feels a part of our uh, entire St. Mark's community, but it's actually a separate licensed facility. And all of our preschools and daycare centers, many of them uh, have been running since March, uh, first for essential workers and then many programs throughout the summer. And so it's been wonderful for us because we've had a chance to reach out to some of our colleagues who have been in session either since March or over the summer and learn from some of the best practices there. And what the science is showing us is that with little ones, you know, certainly we can make the case for uh, education, uh, social, emotional, and academic uh, benefits for all of our kids. But we know, particularly in our youngest learners, those benefits are really important. And then on top of that, we know uh, that we can safely work with our youngest students uh, as well. And so we have set up the highest level of safety protocols, again, learning from what our public health department ha has been teaching us and our colleagues and what the guidelines say. And as we study childcare facilities, uh, all of those protocols have been really successful with our youngest learners. What will uh, campus look like for students when they finally are able to return? Will it be different from what they're used to? It will be, and that's part of the heavy lifting that we've done this summer. If you were to go up to the community hall right now, it is our temporary storage unit. We have uh, removed lots of furniture uh, from the classrooms. They're quite streamlined now because we uh, need to maintain six feet of distance uh, between the desks and the classroom. And then we're taking out some of the things like beanbag chairs and those sorts of things that are hard to clean. And so we've really tried to make cleaning and disinfecting easy and also the social distancing in a classroom. So that will feel really different. We also uh, have expanded our preschool. So the two kindergarten classrooms are now under uh, preschool being used by preschool. So we've shuffled a few things around. So kids will be in different uh, spaces than they're used to. We're using every inch of our campus and we are grateful to our uh, church community for allowing us to use community hall and the music room. Um, so we're really using all of our spaces. Um, and then we'll have a different set of protocols to come on campus uh, as well. We wanna make sure that we're washing hands and using hand sanitizer, doing all of the safety checks that you would be doing anywhere you go these days, um, just making sure that you haven't had an exposure uh, elsewhere, that you're not showing symptoms. Um, so we'll be doing that kind of screening as well. 
but I think, uh, you know, kids will feel like it's uh, very similar to what they had before. Um, however, one of the big changes is that they'll be in a cohort, what we are calling a stable group, Mm -hmm. um, that, that they will stay with for the day. We won't have the kind of mixing and mingling that we've had in the past uh, due to safety guidelines. Long-term, as school changes materially, as, uh, as we look at going forward in a different kind of environment, is there still a need for a school like St. Mark's or has it really, is it really about to become a virtual world and kids will learn at home some other way? Yeah, you know, this is the question I think that every educator is asking, but I, I think what we're learning in this moment, and we feel this, I think, as adults in our personal lives, um, and certainly our kids, that it's hard to replicate the, um, the personal connection that you feel when you're in person with someone. I don't think that we can ever recreate that. And what we know is that that's such an essential part of learning as well. We can function in this way and we're needing to in this moment, but I don't think it trumps you know, the, um, the importance of being in person in a classroom and certainly the social emotional benefits that come along with that. Um, so I don't think that that will change fundamentally, but I think we are learning some interesting lessons in this time things that uh, we would have never thought about that we will probably hang on to even when we're back in person uh, in the future. And I think the mark of a good school, and St. Mark's has had this legacy, is to be nimble and adaptable and innovative. And you know what we ultimately wanna do is make sure that the education we're providing for our students is relevant for their future, which may be very different from the experience that we had. And I think this moment is really uh, encouraging us to think outside of the box about what the immediate future looks like, and that's hard to grasp, uh, let alone, you know, 10 years from now, what kids' careers will look like. So we provide that foundation, we always have, and I think we've been successful as a school because we've been able to really look ahead and make sure that our kids are prepared with the skills and competencies that they need to be successful for their future. <laughs> One final question before I let you go, because I know it's a busy day. Uh, how can we help? How can we as a, as a church community support St. Mark's School? Oh. Well, you already have and have, you know, really since the beginning kept us in your prayers and we appreciate that. That is not lost on our uh, community. Uh, the church has been so supportive uh, in terms of providing space uh, for us to do our work here and we appreciate that. Um, Mother Betsy and Carrie uh, have been showing up all summer, um, supporting our faculty and staff in so many different ways. And that, that also has uh, meant a lot. You know, we will continue to keep you posted as we go along. One of the things that we really want to think about this year is celebrating our 60th anniversary. 60 years is so amazing. And we want our church community to be involved in that celebration. Um, you know, the mission and vision of our school is very much alive today. That was founded out of, you know, the church community. And we want to celebrate with you as well. And so we're figuring out how to do that in this climate this year but we hope that um, those will be opportunities for our entire community to come together. And what a wonderful time to be able to celebrate something like that in the midst of you know, all that we're dealing with. So those are a few things I can think about. Good, we'll put it on the list. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Jennifer Foley Tolbert, head of St. Mark's School. Thanks for spending a little time with us this morning. Oh, thank you so much. So good to see you and thank you for your support. Uh, the board's been showing up this summer too. We usually are quiet and it hasn't been a quiet summer and so I appreciate your support. <laughs> That's it for this edition of St. Mark's at Midweek. Thanks to our associate producers, Emily Wright and Lucy Grindon. Another update from St. Mark's next Wednesday and our regular worship podcast on Sunday, also live on Zoom. Until then, stay safe, stay healthy and be good to each other. I'm Matt Wright. Thank you.